Don't they run it Good off? evening. This is the Safety and Public Works Committee, and we have now 10 items on the agenda. Um, it's Monday, March 17th at 6.31, and we'll start out with um, Jeff Halsether on item number one. It's the improvements 13, 17, 13, 18, and 1402 adoption of a resolution awarding the bin. And he can quickly explain it. Yes, uh, last uh, Wednesday we did receive bids for these improvements. Uh, these improvements consist of the resurfacing on Willow Street between South uh, 7th and Southeast 13th, on uh, 10th Avenue Northeast between Highways 25 and 210, and on South 5th Street between Laurel and Front, uh, right next to City Hall. Um, uh, we received two bids, and that is what we expected. It's a, a primarily a paving contract, so uh, we don't really have two paving contractors in the area. Anderson Brothers and Tri-City, we received bids from, bo from both. Um, the engineer's estimate on the project was $370,828.25, and the low bid received uh, was from Tri-City Paving out of Little Falls in the amount of $359,926.57, so almost 3% below our uh, estimate on the project. Um, the bids look great. Uh, with that, staff would uh, recommend that the council adopt a resolution uh, awarding the bid. To Tri City Paving. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Second, move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Great. Item number two classification of tax forfeit parcels. See attachment. We've got quite a few pages here, and I'm sure you can condense that real quick, Jeff. Yes, I certainly will try to do that. We received a notification from Crow Wing County that quite a number of parcels in both the Serene Pines and the Delmar Estates subdivisions have gone tax forfeit. Um, with that, they, uh, the county board has classified them as non-conservation and would like to offer them for uh, public sale at the next um, uh, land auction. Um, with that, we do have assessments, special assessments, uh, certified against those parcels that were lost. Uh, attached to the packet, there is a spreadsheet that identifies uh, what those assessment amounts are. Uh, we will uh, attach that assessment amount uh, to the parcels on the resale uh, so that we can, as they sell, we can uh, recoup those uh, special assessments. The, um, in reviewing the list, uh, staff's recommendation is that, uh, we're basically we're in agreement that um, uh, all of the normal lots uh, should be classified as non-conservation and offered for sale. Uh, there's only one exception within the plat, and that was outlot A of Serene Pines. Uh, it's a 20-foot a wide lot between Sugarberry uh, Creek, Tr Sugarberry Creek, which is the name of the road, and the Paul Bunyan Trail. And the intent of, of that uh, outlaw was to have it dedicated to the public for a trail access uh, between the Paul Bunyan Trail and the, and the public street. So uh, that one staff would recommend that the council uh, request the county board to uh, classify it as conservation and to uh, hold it or to retain that parcel for public service or public purposes. Uh, Mr. Chair, yep. if we do that, Jeff, then what obligation do we immediately incur relative to uh, taking care of it? The, um, you know, I know under the statutes, uh, a lot of times if we if we want to pull something like that, then the, the county has, um, you know, they, I think they could require us to, to uh, work an appraisal on it and, and to actually require us to, to purchase it. But again, we're, this is something similar to Brainerd Oaks where uh, there were a number of outlots platted, and the perp, uh, and the intent at that time was to dedicate those parcels to the public for, uh, in that case, stormwater uh, management. Um, and again, that was the intent here with outlot A is that that be dedicated to the public for, um, you know, for for the trail purposes. So I'm I'm hoping that we can convince the county board to just retain it as a tax forfeit parcel for public well, purposes. Well, who, uh, who would buy it? I mean. Only adjoining it's, properties, right, I it's, presume. Right, it's one? basically not marketable. Oh, not the bottom part, a paragraph. Because oh, yep. there's be no use to anyone correct. else. Correct, correct. Are you aware if anybody might be interested in buying it? I, as you indicated, I think it would only be adjacent property owners that might be interested. And you're not aware of and, and, and both of the adjacent properties are, are tax forfeit lots. Oh. They would buy it to oh. expand their lot to right. get yeah, cheap enough. Right. You know, so, yeah, oh, I could see now, Is there a special assessment on outlot No, no, there's okay. not. Oh, no, we, we only levied uh, assessments against the buildable lots. Okay. In the motion, do you read every single one of these? or No, no, I... Uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't. I would just just reference the the 
the the list. For the, for the public, it's going to be out there somewhere that they can see which lots we're talking about. Then correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's it's every parcel in um, Delmar Estates and uh, in Serene Pines. It's all but two of the lots. Two of the lots uh, have been sold and are not tax forfeit. Everything else has gone tax forfeit. Okay. I, I just have to pursue yes. my question just yep. a little bit further, though. If the county um, classifies it as conservation, what immediate responsibility does the city incur? You can't just let it grow up in big weeds and, and I presume, uh, and, and say, well, it's an access. But if it's an access, it has to be maintained. Mm -hmm. So is that our job? Well, would be. The, um, That's under our ordinance, the only parcels that need to be maintained, um, if I remember correctly, on our, on our grass and weed ordinance, it talks about any properties within 100 feet of anything that is developed and, and maintained. And this would be further than that, away from the nearest parcel that is maintained. So, uh, so immediately, I wouldn't see any okay. need to do that. But as parcels mm -hmm. might sell and, and become developed uh, within 100 feet of that corridor, then we may need to maintain it. Is it currently used as an access? No, there, well, with only one, one of the lots built on currently, there's really no pedestrian okay. traffic coming out of the subdivision okay. to the sure. to the Paul Bunyan Trail. But that's what it was originally designed That's what for? it was initially intended I to be, so yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this ties in with that whole area that we'll be constantly talking about, but, you know, walkway, mm -hmm. bikeable area. Uh, is there a motion to? I would so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number three, building permit rebate program for 2014. This will be discussion of, and I thought maybe we could even come up with a motion if there's, you know, to get the consensus of the council. Well, Mr. Chairman, we yeah. had uh, extensive discussion in our yeah. committee. Yep. Yeah. And I believe the income was something slightly over $7,000, if I remember. The income, uh, or I mean yes. the loss to the city mm -hmm. from that. And, uh, I think we all agreed that it was had been a nice program, but that we should review it and so suspend it, take the year to determine if it seems to hurt the city to not have it or try to make some kind of a of a analysis. Analysis. Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to make a motion that uh, we suspend that program uh, and uh, review it annually. Suspend it for 2000. As of, uh, well, what is today? The 17th. 17th. As of March 20th. It's, is that okay? Fine. 20th? Yes. Okay. It'd be suspended and then reviewed. Don't throw a time in there because I can't. Oh. I don't have enough paper. Okay. <laughs> well, he has to have a time, though. Sure. Um, I, I would think by next um, November 1st, we should have an idea of the number of permits that were issued. So, right. you know, we'll, we'll do our year end uh, permit. Right. Uh, report you know next January so I would think about next February so we could put it back mm -hmm. on an agenda to to show those comparisons of so the, the permits uh, mm -hmm. as of March 20th and review perhaps by December 1 okay and that would be something that you that you what? that automatically comes up through your department yeah, I he wanted it. Okay, you would automatically fine. bring that back to us Right, we'll keep a note on it and, and make sure that we flag, flag it so we can bring that back back to the committee. Review by February 1, Gary. Okay. So, okay, that's good. Yeah, that, that way you can collect your year end down. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. I mm -hmm. think it's always good to know yeah. where you're going and what, you know, otherwise mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where did, you're going. Did you move on that? I did. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number four 2014 citywide cleanup. Again, another discussion that we had in our committee. And yeah, where we left it was that um, I was going to have been trying to determine who um, I'd be, I've contacted uh, Terma, Sir, Sir Toma Kiwanis, and I'm trying to get a hold of Brainerd uh, women of today. Oh, yeah. Um, and the first two are coming together okay I still don't have the information bottom line the um, third one I haven't figured out who to talk to yet 
It sounds like all of these groups are struggling um, for membership, not necessarily for projects, but for enough people to actually pull their projects off. So another group that I wondered if it may make sense to talk to is um, the ACs. How about the Eagles? They are very active yeah, these that's days. Good point, yeah. to, uh, you know, yep. nothing wrong in asking. Right. Right. Okay. I will. And then there's another group, and it is women, and that's Santa. It's a professional women's club. Hmm. So you know why? Why not? I'll find them. Find them. Okay. Do you want to update? Real quick on where we're at, so these the rest of the folks know what we're talking about on the cleanup. We had a we spent seventy five thousand three years ago, you know, a couple of thousand two years ago. And, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, three years ago, we we conducted the curbside uh, pickup uh, all over uh, all the residential districts of the city. Uh, cost was between seventy and seventy five thousand. Um, a lot of participation, uh, but a lot of things that probably. You know, we clean out a lot of basements, a lot of garages, and a lot of barns. So uh, a lot of we put a lot of stuff in the landfill. Um, two years ago, we uh, kind of went the opposite direction, and we did a uh, voucher program where we uh, mailed uh, landfill vouchers with a $10 face value to all the property owners in the city of Brainerd, um, and that was. Uh, if I remember the numbers correctly, I think we had a little over a hundred participants in in that program, um, and the total cost on that was a little over a thousand dollars. Then last year we had a um, a centralized pickup where we uh, had uh, contracted with uh, garbage haulers for both roll-offs and and uh, garbage trucks. I uh, had a centralized uh, drop-off location over by the old Pomida in Northeast Brainerd. Um, I think quite a poor turnout. We had uh, about 24 or 25 participants. Uh, the uh, cost on that, and that was not, by the way, free to the public. Uh, the public had to uh, pay for the tipping fees for whatever they dropped off. Uh, and even at that, it still cost us, I think, about 750 or $800 to, uh, to do that. Um, so between, between those programs and uh, the a proactive code enforcement that we did last summer. We're just not sure what we're going to see out in the neighborhoods this year, but um, we're, we're hopeful that with that proactive code enforcement, and if we can follow that up a little bit this year, uh, that we're hoping on a staff level anyway that that kind of solves our solves our problems, at yeah. least from a, a neighborhood appearance perspective. And I agree. So right now we're not really looking at the city going forward with anything. Uh, we're going to drop that as far as like last year. We put oodles of hours in for, and that was part of it real low return um, so we're right now out of committee it's right. the chip has volunteered to move ahead and, and if you need help I don't know how you can obtain that no I'll, I'll figure it out it just takes staying on it yeah could, could I just raise a suggestion and we don't have to act on this uh, just think about it um, certainly wouldn't do any harm might not do any good to notify like the Chamber of Commerce and the Master Gardeners group, and with the city kind of have a beautified Brainerd uh, program again, I mean, more encouragement than anything, um, getting some publicity out, uh, encouraging people to pick the flowers, rake the yard, trim the shrubs. You know, many of those things are not very terribly costly, but they really make a huge difference, and it's really a question of pride and caring how your community looks maybe it wouldn't do a bit of good mr. chair I just wondered you know if we got the chamber involved and the and the master gardeners because they are all into plants and flowers and even the arboretum there's a new director out there and and maybe have a little uh, group meeting and come up with ideas mm -hmm. now if you think it's totally stupid I'll Forget it, I would never say that. Well, you could say it if you want to, but just thought it. <laughs> no, it wouldn't no, hurt any, anything. All ideas are welcome. So, shall we have Jeff uh, contact those groups and see if they'd be interested in in working or putting then, together a yep, small? You need meeting? all the help you can get, right? Yeah, um, sure do. Well, yeah, but I see that as kind of oh, totally separate. Totally separate. You know. Totally separate. Yeah. I just saw this as extra. Mm -hmm. 
that a, a well, motion? I, do I well, need to Mark that just gave me a nudge, and, and I think he's taken back a little bit because I, th I think that's more that. more falls under planning. Oh. Do we make a motion I, that Mark pursue that? Uh, okay, I'll move that the city planner pursue getting together, or at least discussing with the chamber, the master gardeners, and well, uh, well us, the city, and have a small group meeting. Maybe they could each appoint a couple people to see if we could give some impetus to a beautified Brainerd program. Second. Mm -hmm. All favor? Aye. I'm going to let you make that motion. Oh, jeez. So Thank oh. you. <laughs> You're all Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be Mark even. that's doing it. All right. Don't get mad, I get even. Okay. <laughs> I can make. I told Mark today. I'll make him do his right? own motions. Yeah. Do you have any problem with that, Mark? I can find the time to do it. <laughs> well, you you must have wanted it if you were nudging Jeff. No, I was saying congratulations to Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I can make him a motion. <laughs> let's let's um, just hire a couple more staffers to assist you. Item number five. <laughs> Whittier School Review. If everybody remembers, we did a tour of the school. It's the front page paper here with Jessica. And uh, go ahead, Jeff, what uh, staff has come up with. Well, yeah, there's, a, there's a memo in the packet uh, kind of from staff's perspective on, on having uh, looked at, at the school structure. And there's, um, you know, I think we took a look at it primarily just from the what, what the structure itself was like and, and how easily it could be retrofitted or modified to accommodate city offices, assuming that if we bought it, that's what we would use it for. And uh, some of the deficiencies or concerns that, that you know, we uh, noticed were the, the structure itself, um, just the, 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 the method of, of construction, I think, makes it very um, difficult, not very uh, cost effective to to modify the size and shape of spaces. We've got, um, looks like all the uh, the central walls on, on both sides of the hallway are, are bearing walls and they're supporting the, the reinforced concrete floor systems on each floor. Um, so to, to start taking out, you know, it's just not practical or possible to take out pieces of the wall. So we're, we'd really be restricted in terms of, of, of how we utilize space. Um, also, presently, a, a very high percentage of the total floor area is unusable. Uh, about 40% or 11,000 square feet of the 27,000 uh, just isn't usable. It's in hallway, it's in uh, other support areas, um, the gymnasium, uh, but it's in uh, basically floor areas that, that couldn't be modified for really for city use. Uh, so it's not a very efficient um, uh, use of space. The um, HVAC system. Uh, there is no HVAC system. It's just a heating system. Uh, there's no air conditioning, no ventilation, uh, no humidity control. Uh, so again, to, to utilize it for something like office spaces, particularly in the, in the summer and the winter, <clears throat> I think we'd have to do some, some serious modifications, probably even more, quite more costly than what we're looking at in this building even. So um, I think that would really be an excessive uh, a cost to, to modify that. Um, Kind of in, in general, our, our um, you know our general impression was that if we if we need additional office space, um, you know it might be that you know there might be better locations than that block in North Brainerd, um, and most certainly we can um, construct or uh, come up with that that additional space that we may need a lot more cost effectively than than acquiring that building and and trying to modify it for our use. So. Um, I guess those are just our observations, um, mm -hmm. and you know certainly it's up to the council what the council would like to do. But uh, from a staff perspective, we just don't view that as being a very cost-effective um, acquisition. Um, there is not an immediate need for more city space either that I nope. see. Not an immediate need that we have to be pursuing for that on that end. But um, I'll listen to a committee. I think that uh, we have done as much due diligence as we can on building. And I think that, um, sadly, uh, we are running into a, a dead end on trying to, um, feels like we've done everything we possibly can to try to figure something out for that building. And um, it seems like a, it seems like a dead end. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I would move that we 
um, you know, send it back to the school district and say, you figure it out. I second the motion. And uh, I concur with everything that you're saying on that. So, um, all in favor, with aye. aye. Uh, could we hold, I don't, is there anyone here from Campman now? Okay, because I spoke with them today and they, I suggested they be here because I understand there may, might be a lease. And it's strange how the railroad can have leases with so different item, parties at the same time. Item so. number six, Campman encroachment. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have some people from Campman, yes. so I'll start out with Jeff and then, right. you know, if we need Thank to. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Well, the, if I can, if, uh, we had this on our agenda uh, two meetings ago uh, to talk a little bit about the uh, building that is located within the, uh, the spur right-of-way, what we call the, you know, the, the old spur, spur line right-of-way. Um, at, at that meeting, it was referred back to uh, Mark to take a look at the existing uses in the structure to see uh, what the status of that structure might be from a zoning perspective. And I think with that, I'd like to, you know, maybe Mark could comment on what... Um, what his observations were. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Mr. President, members of the committee, um, yes, uh, the building official, uh, Tim Cahey and I, uh, went over to the site, uh, met with the owner, uh, took a tour of the, um, of the building, uh, took a look at what was going on inside, um, and because my concern was is that the building wasn't being used for um, the operation, that it was you know, simply either um, empty or being used for um, private storage and not being part of the business. Um, what I observed when I walked through the facility is that it's, it's a building that's connected, has an integral connection to the, to the main building, if you will. Um, they're, they're, you can get from one building to the next. And I also observed that, you know, there was some use of the facility for the business. I did see um, um, items being stored in there. I did see some windows and some doorways, door frames and doors, and um, I did see a lot of personal belongings, but I did see some items that belonged to the business. <clears throat> so I would say that it hasn't been abandoned for use as a business purpose. So, you know, in, in being somewhat flexible in the situation in terms of its use, um, I think that uh, it has not lost its non-conforming status in terms of its ability to be used for the business. I would state, though, that the building does the building doesn't look in very good shape and uh, it's not sprinkled and um, it's a very it could be a very dangerous situation um, as far as certificate of insurance and insuring it um, being it's on our property you know and the liability if somebody gets hurt um, do we carry the liability because of that you know it could be kids or even a, an employee there um, and you know the city's got deep pockets so does that carry right into the city that would be an issue to talk over unless you have an answer to that one to talk over with the attorney I, I think the, the liability issue is one that we would want to deal with if, if the buildings allowed to, to remain there that we would want to um, you know make sure that we've got the liability issue resolved that that the city would be completely indemnified uh, probably through a certificate of insurance yes. uh, to naming us as an additional insured <clears throat> Um, the, I guess with, with that being said, the, um, you know, in one of my earlier memos, I did uh, lay out a couple of uh, possible alternatives for, for how to deal with this, and, and you know, one of them, of course, was you know, we could either just require the structure to be removed. Uh, if we do want to uh, allow the structure to remain there, the, um, uh, a couple of we could have a couple of options one to either uh, lease the the land um, to the adjacent property owner um, and that you know we could come up with some terms for that lease um, um, through the form of an agreement um, but it, it, then with that we would have to to determine what an appropriate lease rate might be um, I I do have some concerns about that I think if, if we started talking about leasing uh, property to them um, I think we want to check with the county assessor to see exactly what impacts that might have because I, you know, I understand that us as, as owners of um, the, the city hall annex right on the north side of, of the city hall with the old fire hall, um, 
it's okay if we lease that to uh, other nonprofit agencies or or the state of Minnesota, uh, like our Department of Public Safety. But uh, I understand that if we lease an office space to someone who's not a nonprofit, who's a, a for-profit company, that we that does jeopardize our, our tax exempt status on that building. And that's my concern about the railroad right of way. If we enter into some sort of a lease, um, is that going to somehow jeopardize our tax exempt status on? on that property acquisition. Um, so I think that, that would need to be clarified. The, um, the only other item, the other way of doing that, which we've done in some cases, is to grant a temporary easement. Um, and within that easement, uh, there would be uh, an agreement set out where, um, you know, typically the way we do that is the, the structure would allow it, would, could be allowed to remain there um, unless uh, a couple of events happen. One would be, you know, somehow the, the structure were uh, partially or, or totally destroyed, but by partial, you know, whether it's by wind, fire, some other event, uh, if it's damaged to say over half of its uh, uh, market value is determined by the auditor, then it would not be allowed to be reestablished on the site. It would have to have to be removed. Um, other conditions of that could be that uh, it needs to be maintained in accordance with our uh, property maintenance codes. Uh, which would mean, you know, paint repair, maintaining the grounds around it, those types of things. And if, um, and, and if it wasn't, then uh, the city could have some means by which to terminate the, the temporary easement. And, um, and then finally, too, I think if the you know, city just determined that there was a, a, a more of a, you know, a better use for the property, that upon you know, certain notice that we could terminate the easement. I have one quick question, and that would be when somebody buys and sells the property that is, you know, in the property zone, that building doesn't go with the purchase. So this building is owned by the city, does not go as part of the purchase, isn't part of the purchase, or nothing like that, because you can't sell something on somebody else's land. Right. So with that, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it, you know, from that end of it, uh, down the road, what's the incentive to repair something that's not yours? You know, I mean, so it'll, I mean, because they're not, if they put repairs in it, they're not going to get any dollars back. So why would you not just let it deteriorate? Because mm -hmm. you can't sell it. So what's what's going to be? Well, if it's if it's there with um, with some sort of a temporary easement, then um, it, it it would still be taxed, I guess, as personal property uh, on that easement. Okay. So I, you know, right now I'm not. We'd have to check with the county assessor and see just how the the county assessor views that. Uh, you know, we don't get a tax statement for the railroad right of way, so I don't know if the assessor is is adding the value of that particular structure to the adjacent property or or, or what's happening with that. Well, Mr. Chairman, yes. I think probably we should listen to the people who are here. Uh, Campman Sashendor is a century business in this community. Uh, it's been there for a hundred years and uh, I believe pretty much uninterrupted. And when we first got this memo a couple of weeks or so ago, I was kind of puzzled by it. So I went over and visited with Mr. Erickson, who was the current owner. And my question to him was pretty simple. Do you have a lease from the railroad? Because I thought it was very strange if they had a building on there that the railroad owned, on land that the railroad owned, if they had it without a lease. And I thought, if they have a lease, how did the railroad turn around and sell a piece of leased property to the city? Only the railroad would get by with that. And I'm not sure they would. Um, Mr. Erickson told me that they did have a lease. Uh, and he wasn't able at that moment to lay his hands on it. And he said, I cannot swear to you what it says. And I said, you need to find the lease if you possibly can, because there is an, an, a legal issue here. Uh, if you have a lease that gives you that land, during the period when the railroad sold it to the city, I would believe legally their claim takes precedent. They have had the lease. It was a good lease. I don't know if it is or isn't. Um, spoke with, I believe it's Mr. Purcell, to, who is a prospective buyer, and suggested he come here. And uh, if they found the lease, let's talk about it. Uh, because we want to, or certainly at least I, want to be fair to everyone. I, we can't go in there like, uh, you know, with our big boots stomping and say, get out, we want it. Um, we have to see what they have 
and then be fair and honorable in this situation. So I'm Which asking we all that are. they, well, we hopefully. Sometimes. Well, I don't want accusations. Well, all right, let's well, not then. But I'm stating a fact. Uh, we don't want to just push people around because we I'm can. I'm not doing that. I'm all not right, then let's to listen to them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, come on up and so we can all hear what you have to say. Did you find the lease? Mark found it. I have not seen it. Oh. He still has it somewhere. Okay. So you don't have it tonight? I don't. Um, he is gone right now. He should be back next Friday, I think. Okay. This coming Friday. But he does have the lease. He does have the Did lease. Did he share with you what was in it? He told me he found it and it was $400 a year. Is it in perpetuity? That I don't know. Um, he just said you stopped by, told him he should probably find it. He looked for it, found it, and then told me he found it the following day. So we have city. to find out okay. yeah, what's on it. Can you tell us what your plan might be? Um, my plan is to hopefully purchase the business um, and purchase it and grow it, which in that case I would definitely need that area you back there that. yes um to answer your question about upkeep we would be using it quite a bit so we would need to keep it up um just for equipment storage um, of the lumber and pre-bought doors things of that nature yeah and i just can quickly go over personal experience in St. Cloud with a billboard that somebody did a land survey on that I was getting rent for and when they did the survey the billboard ended up being on his property and I don't get the rent no more <laughs> you know I mean you don't right. get something that's on somebody no. else's property no. I mean, right. that's this the stuff that happened right but we do need to see what the lease says yes. Mr. Chair. so I'm just wondering if we should I hold this hold over it. yeah yeah. Hold this yeah, over to the next meeting, okay. okay. And then I can get right. some more. I don't mind if you give me a call, and, okay. and you know, and I would be more than happy to tour the place too. Same you here. know, I don't have yeah. stomping boots on, like <laughs> somebody's trying to say here. <laughs> uh, I, I, I have a business myself, a and, uh, a and more understanding than a lot of people give me credit for. Mr. Purcell, are you planning to keep, if you if the purchase goes through, are you planning to keep it as a sash and door? Yes. Oh, yeah. that is so good. Can you get the Thank copies you. to Patrick so that he can give them to our city attorney uh, to reveal? Is that what you just mentioned? No. Yeah. yeah. If as we soon can. as possible, you can work with us, you know, and then we can always get the copies from them. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, hold this over. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Or, did you have any questions of us? I don't think so. Okay. okay. <laughs> and your name was? Justin. Justin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you guys for coming up. Yeah, oh, we'll uh, just hold it then. Patrick and I were just chatting. Yeah, if we could uh, possibly get copies of that lease, that'd be great. And yes. we'll we'll have to pull the deed that we got from uh, the railroad and have our city attorney kind of review these and see just what. Yeah. And then you'll see and you maybe check with the uh, assessor's yeah. office too to see what, what what the impacts might be. Uh, and maybe they're paying taxes on that, and they probably are. They might be. Thank you for that. Item number seven, improvement 13-19. An adoption of a resolution receiving report and calling for a hearing at 7.30 p.m. Monday, April 7th. See attachment. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay, uh, Pat, attached to the packet, we do have a feasibility uh, report for improvement 1319, which is the streets around Garfield School in Northeast Brainerd. Uh, so that's 10th Avenue and 11th Avenue between J and L Street, uh, J Street and L Street between 10th and 11th Avenues. Um, along with this project, uh, basically it's a complete reconstruction project, uh, removals, uh, we are replacing two blocks of water main uh, at Brandon Public Utilities request. We're replacing about three and a half blocks of sanitary sewer, which is actually located back in the alleys. Uh, but uh, it's, as long as we're up there, we want to do it with this project. Um, the, um, and, and this also is being coordinated with the Safe Routes uh, to School Sidewalk Project, which, and by the way, we're still waiting on, on plan, uh, plan approval for that. So. Um, and once we do get plan approval, uh, the state is actually going to set our bid date for that one. But in the meantime, we want to get this other street project going. Total estimated cost on this project, about 365000 And in the memo, I've uh, uh, estimated the uh, breakdown of those uh, costs. 
Uh, street costs about 355,000, storm sewer about 135,000. Incidentally, we're redoing the storm sewer because a lot of the uh, storm sewer pipe up on L Street and 11th Avenue is older clay tile pipe. And uh, we uh, camered it, it's fractured. Uh, we have to get reinforced concrete pipe underneath those roadways or we're, we're gonna have a problem. So, we're, we're, so with that, we're proposing to change out the storm sewer systems. Uh, sanitary sewer about 172,000 and the water main about 121,000. The um, on those utilities, we would uh, propose to use utility funds for those uh, expenses. So the uh, part, you mean the storm sewer, sanitary sewer, and water water main, correct? And will the grant cover the street amount? No, the safe routes grant is just going to be the sidewalk, okay. and that's not included in this project. So this so will be assessed. This would be assessed, yes. Page two. It yep. Up here. And of that three hundred and fifty-five thousand, we uh, are estimating that about one hundred and thirty thousand will be assessed, okay. and um, a lot of. And the reason that's quite a bit, considerably less than half, is because um, we have a, a lot of side yard deductions with uh, the school. And so there's a, a, about, I think it's close to 40,000 inside yard deductions. And uh, then also we uh, are doing some extensive intersection uh, corrections, both at L Street and at J Street and at 11th. Basically all the intersections around there were doing some significant uh, reconfiguration or rework in the geometry, which is adding to the actual intersection cost. And then will they have the uh, handicapped accessibility? They'll be built with that, so yes. wheelchairs and such mm -hmm. can uh, get have easier access right mm -hmm. so uh, at this point staff um, uh, let's see we have put together a preliminary assessment rule and we are recommending that the council set a public hearing for 730 on Monday April 7th so moved. Okay. All in favor okay. thanks Jeff for a good update on that item number eight we're gonna go to mobile food trailer <laughs> request and I use the word trailer we've already been approving the truck yeah Go ahead. Um, is this Mark going to be you? Yep. Okay. okay. Thanks, Mark. You take it. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, you've received a request from a company or uh, called Rub on the Go. Uh, Kim and Diza Prock are interested in operating a um, food trailer in the city of Brainerd. Um, and they've provided you with a letter ex explaining uh, what their business is and how they would like to operate and information about their trailer. They provided you uh, with some information about the food they intend to serve, and, uh, and so they're here tonight to get, uh, hopefully, to get approval from the city council to operate the food trailer. Uh, and I would be a tough one. Uh, let me digress for just a minute and just go back. You all remember that mobile food units, and I'll use the term mobile food units now, uh, received a lot of attention at the beginning of 2013. Um, as you recall, there was a, even a committee that was appointed and there were meetings and there were meetings with Brainerd restaurants and uh, owners and uh, operators and um, a lot of discussion and there was, there was uh, uh, quite a bit of emotion that went along with, the, with the, what to do with this issue as well. Um, and in the end, in 2013, what the city council decided to do was to establish a trial period for the, for the remainder of 2013 to, um, the trial period would allow uh, food trucks only to operate in the city of Brainerd. And food trucks um, were allowed to operate under a set of parameters, uh, operational parameters, as well as a uh, set of geographic parameters food trucks could only operate in certain locations in the city at certain times of the day. Um, and there had to be information submitted by the food truck operator of, of when that was going to happen and um, it could only be on private property, not on the city rights of way and, um, and not on public parks either as well. So that went through 2013 and at the end of 2013 um, we brought this back to the city council to see what it uh, chose to do. And uh, it, it chose to extend the, the, um, the trial period for food trucks in 2014, uh, and only for food trucks. Um, so if any food truck operator came to the city of Brainerd, they would apply for a license and submit the information that they needed to submit, and provided it was sufficient, they could uh, 
operate in accordance with the uh, operational and, and geographic guidelines that, we, that you've set up. Um, well, quite frankly, I knew the day was going to come when we were going to get another application for a different type of operation. Um, and it's finally happened. Um, we have a legitimate request uh, by an uh, operator that, as the, op as the application says, wants to operate a trailer. Um, so uh, this information is presented to you to decide how you want to address this. Um, I guess, um, well, I guess I'll, I'll explain that the easiest or the most straightforward way right now, if you choose to allow um, trailers to operate in additional food trucks, is just to alter, just to amend the trial period to include trailers for 20,000 got to remember is that the reason why we have this trial period is to see how it went because we still need to do some ordinance changes <coughs> to make this a permanent thing in our community too. That has got to happen sometime down the road. And until the council is satisfied with how this is going to operate, you've chosen to go with this uh, uh, temporary, or with this, uh, with this uh, trial period. So, um, again, this is then a request from the Pratzes to... Um, or the Prox, excuse me, uh, to uh, see if you'd be willing to allow food trailers to operate in the city. And um, they're here tonight in the audience um, to expand on their letter and answer any questions that you may have. Mark, can I quickly read a letter from the attorney that you've got? Yes, says, uh, thank you. For with I'm respect to the food truck slash trailer issue, if the trailer is not allowed, the council must have valid reasons for why it's different than a food truck and would not be allowed. Other city codes that I've seen slash drafted make no distinction between food trucks or trailers. And from the attorney's advice, we're pretty much saying it's a go. Yeah, I, the only question I have is if our attorney knows that we're doing this is on a trial period. That's the okay. question I'd want him to, to, to make sure that he knows is that what we're operating under now is this trial period, not something permanent. Okay. And you didn't ask that question when you... I, I probably, I guess I, when I... Maybe didn't put it, phrase it that way. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Because what I sent to him was an email that just mentioned that this might be an issue tonight. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. And to me, an RV, you know, can be either with a fifth wheel or with a motor underneath and drive by itself. And I'm looking at, I'm okay with this, you know. So I'm going to just basically find out from the committee that I have no problem with the trailer or the pull by a tr truck or it's got its own motor. Still, I'm going to follow the guidance. Okay. Let's hear from them. They're here. I'm going to just hear from them right. real quick here. Well, I I, yeah, I, I, I would like to hear if they have my yeah, hand. Okay. Well, come on up, guys. Okay, it just seems like a lot of money. Any other questions? Give me a name and address here. Yes, and my wife. Hi. So we just moved over here um, in hopes of starting a business here. Um, we, and we'd already built this trailer in North Dakota and then decided to come over here with family. I was born in Aiken, so we were kind of returning. And we were hoping to do this business here, as a, and it, it's our income here. It's all we would have. So we've moved here and then run into this. Um, we're also trying to go to Baxter and, and Aiken County and wherever we can go to establish an income. Um, we know there's places we can't go because we are large. I mean, we pulled a trailer with a Class A motor home uh, that way we take our own bathroom with us. We're, we're fully self-contained. Our trailer is 26 feet long. It's a full kitchen. I mean, we plan on serving good food at a reasonable price. We do Hawaiian shaved ice for the kids, hot dogs. Um, what we'd like to do is go to softball games, events, um, and cater to the public here. Um, but in these ordinances, it's stopped us. We can't do it. So. That's what we're looking for. Actually, a way of life. I, I have one. Where are you living now? On Wise Road. Oh. Okay. So yep. You bought a home there. And we're renting right now. So we, well, we're, you know, my uncle's in Deerwood, my aunt's in Palisade. My grandparents were in McGregor, um, um, Johnson's, Wenzel's. Uh, I mean, I was born here. When when did you guys come back? When did you? Uh, we've been we started renting in January. Just a couple of months ago. Yep. Okay. So you weren't aware of all the commotion that we went through no, last year? No, I was not. Okay. No. I mean, I've looked into it other places, and 
I didn't think it was an issue, so I really didn't look into it until we got here and started doing it. I mean, Minnesota Department of Health, they've already approved our plan. Uh, license fees are already paid. Everything's done. All we have to do is get a final inspection and we're licensed. Yeah. So the um, commotion that we went through last year was about, um, you know, Brainerd is unlike many other communities, especially bigger communities anywhere else in that there is enough potential business for restaurants that they can spread themselves a little thinner so that food trucks aren't really an issue. There's so many customers anyway that it's just, it's not a big deal. Brainerd, I'm personally, I'm just seen as um, quite a different community in that just the way we are when, when, when we get compared to cities like St. Cloud or Minneapolis or elsewhere, you, you can't compare. It's just mm -hmm. not the same colored horse. <clears throat> and so the concern last year came about um, towards our brick and mortar restaurants who have been here for many of them for a long time, you know, paying their taxes for a long time, just getting by. And so the Consideration is one of mobile units coming in, especially during the peak times, siphoning off all the good business right off the top, and then they're gone. And our, meanwhile, our, do you see where I'm going with this? We plan on living here. Well, right, I you understand. And, but and, and we're, a, we're, a, we're a business, too. We pay the fee. I mean, like downtown area here, we can't go there. We're too big. So... We'd rather go out to like the park, say Memorial Park. It's huge out there. There, the, you know, I've been here since January. I haven't seen a car in that parking lot. So, why can't we go park places like that? Um, I'm not interested in downtown. Well, here you got downtown area limited from 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. to 2 a.m. We can't make no money then. I mean, there it costs us money to come mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So we need to go to areas that where we can make a, a living also, mm -hmm. um, as a business, as part of the community. Granted, they have brick and mortar. We probably have a hundred grand in our unit, you know. So we put our money into it. We plan on staying here. So why? My question is, why can't we be treated as a business operating in Brainerd, not not as, you know, a truck coming here trying to steal business or whatever? That's not our intent. Um, same way with the events, you know. I I heard that there's going to be an event center coming up. Okay, they'll do catering and stuff. They don't have a kitchen. Um, We'd like to go somewhere like that, be the kitchen for them, sell, like a wedding, whatever. We've also had inquiries about businesses doing like a customer appreciation day. We'd go set up on their business, and all their customers, we'd serve them. Same way like the car dealership, say. I mean, you go over to like Mills, or, you know, we were there today. They're huge. I mean, what's wrong with setting up like that? That's granted, that's Baxter. Um, but... Yeah. Under the law, we can't go more than 21 days in one spot, so we need multiple places to go um, because Minnesota Department of Health won't let you go more than 21 days in a calendar year. Mm -hmm. So we got to do that, and then Minnesota Department of Health, like you were saying, is motorized or trailer. Mm -hmm. That's the way their law reads. Um, so um, we knew that when we built the trailer, thinking wherever one one wherever it's good for one, it's good for the other. You understand that if we approve it, uh, and we make the change in the ordinance to allow it, you're still bound by the other conditions in the ordinance. Yes, ma'am. Getting permission to be there, uh, not being on public property, uh, I believe it denies the use of public property. Or well, it, it says right, setup is permitted in any city park not within a food truck air setup area when approved by the city. Okay. So it okay. says you can go to any city park. When approved by the city. When right. So mm -hmm. I go to Parks and Rec, right? Right. So right. And I was just going to, if I may interject, yeah. I, I do know for a fact, and I don't want to take words out of the park director's mouth, but in discussion for him, any public park that has concession operations, um, they will, the park board is not going to be in support of any uh, but operations. All we're dealing with tonight is, is a trailer, a food truck. The definition of will it be classified? We're not getting into all what the food trucks are doing or what if if it's the same classification. Well, it kind of follows. Well, he should just here. know. He should just know what he's getting into. 
Right. You know, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. And that's, we would like to go to the parks and stuff. Like yeah, softball that's games something and stuff. Right. That's a whole different right. issue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And say they got a concession there, but you know what? Yeah. Uh, over there at Memorial Park, how many days a year does that yeah. concession open? Only during that B game, probably. Yeah. Not during softball games. So. Well, first you got to get in to talk we, about where well, you know what we else need you this want. issue first. Yeah. yeah. Let's and deal then we can talk issue. about the other issues. Yeah. Because we can just carry this on all the way to. Yeah. And then the other point too is it really isn't about you guys. No, I know. No, but or how where many your heart is at, yeah. what you're trying to Yeah. To how do. many applicants yeah. do you have? That's a good point. Well, up to this point, not that very many. One, I think, right? Yeah. But what, we, what we're trying to do is, is establish rules of the road so that anybody who right. comes in with whatever intentions they might have. They still um, got to follow these. Yeah, so, yeah. And, that's you know, not and the other should. thing that makes this, I guess, doable for me is the fact that as you said, it's yeah. it falls under how we're looking at food trucks. We're going to try it for this year. Right. The reason we extended it was because we didn't have an opportunity to really get a feel for what kind of effect does it have on um, our permanent businesses. Well, we hope we have a good effect. Well, I would be <laughs> that would be to, nice, yeah. you know, and you know, and that there we really is do that. want to cater to the kids and, and events like that. That's why we bought a keep we interjecting bought. the definition of the food truck versus the trailer. That's where we're at. Yep, because I know. Are we okay but with that? I'm okay with including it in the ordinance or the proposed ordinance okay. or and reviewing it along with the rest of yes. it. But you have to again I emphasize yeah, and he there are already but rules and regs. Yeah. Right. That yeah, yeah. and that's and like I say, there's places on here we don't want to go. Yeah. We, we are big. We're 60 some feet long. Yeah, sounds like. Like if you're going to build a house, go see those guys. Like if you're going to do this, go see those guys. Make sure right. that that's who you go. Right. And I'll be in touch with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> More. So, that. what yeah. motion do we need, uh, Mr. Chair? Uh, the motion is to say that the definition applies. Go well, ahead, Mark. I, you can I, make I the motion. I might suggest that the uh, motion be to amend the. Uh, uh, the trial period that was approved yeah. uh, for 2014 okay. uh, to include uh, food trailers right. as well as food trucks. Uh, okay. You're really good at making motions. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We really Thanks it. very much. <laughs> We're getting into the 11th hour. Item number nine. Yeah. yeah. No, that's Mark again. I've got two extras. Oh, there's something else? Yeah. That, that's special. Some special hearing. Oh, the appeal. oh, yes, that's an addition to uh, the agenda. That it has to do with the, the WASA site. Uh, no, number nine will be 1224 well, Pine, Pine Street. Oh, Pine Street. Oh, excuse me. I wasn't aware this was going to be. Um, let me regroup, get my thoughts. Well, I can go quickly over. Uh, there have been appeal <laughs> notice. Um, right, okay. Uh, here, here's the situation. There we um, go. The, uh, Mr. Ross is... Uh, uh, currently uh, in jail. However, uh, or the criminal attorney has arranged for Mr. Ross to be released under the Huber law for six hours a day for the rest of the week to go over and clean up his property. And as a matter of fact, I was over there today and he was there and looking like he was trying to clean up his property along with a couple of other people. Um, mm -hmm. However, we are in the middle of this process of the, uh, of the civil infraction and, and the hearing that's required for that civil infraction process, um, and in discussing the process with the city or with the city attorney, uh, we need to schedule a hearing that is conducted by the Safety and Public Works Committee because Mr. Ross has requested a hearing, yeah. uh, an appeal hearing, um, through that civil process, um, and it has to be conducted within 20 days of receiving the official request. And we received the request, I think, last Thursday. So a hearing by the, by the city, in this case, the Safety and Public Works Committee, would need to be held by April 2nd. Uh, his last day in jail is scheduled for March 28th. If, if he doesn't clean things up, he goes back to jail, but his last day is the 28th of March. So our suggestion um, to continue, in the event that he doesn't get things cleaned up by the end of the week through the six hours per day that he's being allotted, um, he's, a, he's asked for an, a hearing. We are, rec we are suggesting and requesting, and hopefully you'll find it, uh, the ability to have a hearing on March 31st or April 1st. That's a Friday, oh, Monday, Monday or, or Tuesday. Tuesday. And maybe at 4 o'clock or something like that. We said 4.30, and I don't the, know what day. The 31st. The 31st. Right. 3.31 at 4.30. 
four thirty. Okay. You're okay and with that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And um, if this goes through, we'll have more information for you on this. Mr. Chair, yeah. will the attorney be present at that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because yes. I think we would need that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, would would it put more difficulty on if we moved it to Tuesday? Oh, I can do Tuesday too. Yeah, if it's a Tuesday. Tuesday. What day would that be? The first. The first. Oh, yeah. Let's go to the first. Four one. Okay. Sir, four o'clock. Four thirty or four o'clock? Oh, four o'clock. Whatever you decide. Four thirty is what I got. Well, whatever. Anytime, whatever you decide. Okay. So we're April first. Which is better for you, Mark? Or uh, it, it doesn't matter. Okay. Four thirty then, Gary. Yeah. Okay. okay. Item number ten. Um, just. Um, Quick update, and we can do that. Yeah, we um, we had had noticed our MS4 uh, presentation and public hearing for this evening, but um, I forgot to get it on the agenda. So the um, so we'd like to reschedule that MS4 public hearing for. Let's see, we need 30 days notice on it, so we'd like to reschedule that for April 21st. That still gives us plenty of time. We're just required to have it before uh, uh, the end of June. So moved. Second. And a report. Thank you. 